Imagine your vehicle running on one of the most abundant elements on this planet, and the only thing coming out of that tailpipe is pure, clean water. No way. Yeah, not the drinking kind, though. Oh, just water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but hey, everyone, welcome or welcome back to Trunk Talk. My name is Charlotte. And I'm Gabby. And this is a podcast where we talk about all things in the automotive industry. And mm -hmm. today we're doing something that is a little bit different because we don't really see this very often. We don't see this at all. At all. At all. <laughs> that's because we're talking about hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. Mm -hmm. So what is, what, is, what is that? Well, first I'm going to tell you what it is, but also what, what it's not, it? because we're going to, we're going to start off with a curveball. So hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, a lot, some people have heard of it. A lot of people have heard of it, but do not understand it at all. And to be fair, that's totally that fine one. because they're not really available and you're not really going to see one on the road at all. So before we explain what it is, I'm first going to start off by saying that it's an electric vehicle. What? I thought it was a hydrogen fuel cell. This ain't, this ain't adding up. The math ain't mathin'. But that's right, even though they run on a gaseous fuel, a ga gaseous fuel. Oh, is that French? Something like that. <laughs> it's Californian. <laughs> that's where these cars originate from. They actually power the vehicle with electricity. So it's going to use that hydrogen fuel to create electricity to propel your vehicle forward. Confusing. I know, but... It gets better. Trust us. Hear me out. Hear me out. So a fuel cell is very different than a traditional electric vehicle that's going to utilize, you mm -hmm. know, your high voltage battery. When you think of an electric car, you're probably going to think of a Tesla. You're going to think of a Kia EV6, something like that with that big, heavy battery. Those vehicles weigh a ton and, you know, they're hefty. But yeah. you, you plug them in every night and you drive for what seems like free, but it's just lower cost. This isn't that kind of electric car. There's no exact battery that the vehicle is drawing power from. Like I said, it's going to run on hydrogen fuel. Now, what is hydrogen fuel? Well, <laughs> to keep it simple, it is an electrochemical reaction. So this is what actually powers the vehicle. It's going to come from the hydrogen, so that sort of fuel, and oxygen in the air. So those two are going to mix together to create this chemical reaction. Mm -hmm. When this happens, you have electrical energy, but you also have water vapor as a byproduct. So that's exactly what's going to be coming out of your tailpipe. So your emissions is water. So not exactly bad for the environment. You know what I mean? Drive over some grass, water the plants, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is what I think of. <laughs> All right, so water vapor is going to be your byproduct, and this is actually very, very similar to the chemical reaction that happens when launching rockets. Now, oh, so while buying a rocket ship? <laughs> buying a rocket ship. Now, this sounds a little okay, bit SpaceX. terrifying. A lot of people are thinking of explosions. You may also think of the movie The Martian, where, you know, he blows himself up. This isn't that kind of reaction, you guys. This is propelling the vehicle forwards, creating electricity to allow for nice, clean, quiet driving. All right, so you may also want to know how it works. So it's going to be stored in high pressure tanks. So the hydrogen itself, they refuel mm -hmm. this with a refueling station, which I'll touch on in a second. It's stored in those high pressure carbon fiber tanks. It's a lot lighter and smaller than a traditional battery. So that is a benefit of these vehicles for sure. It allows the cars to actually drive a little bit further too. So their range is actually quite, quite good. Mm -hmm. Very on par with what we see on gasoline vehicles. Because you can also refuel it, that is a major benefit. You're not waiting for it to charge overnight. Um, you're not waiting for fast chargers to open up because someone else is using it. Because even though it is a fast charger, it still takes a while longer. Yeah. It takes about five minutes to refuel these vehicles. But this is all it, sounding pretty good. It's sounding pretty good, Charlotte, but it's going to get worse. So make sure you guys stay till the end because <laughs> there's a lot to say about these cars. I'll, I'll just put it that way. So... When you hit the gas pedal, the hydrogen is sent to the fuel cell. That's going to mix with the oxygen. This reaction creates the electricity, which powers the vehicle's electric motors, mm -hmm. obviously moving your vehicle for you, creating, you know, driving. <laughs> and there's no long charge times required. Again, sounds phenomenal. Unlike most electric cars that we are used to, you're not going to plug it in, and instead you're filling it up with that hydrogen fuel, which you'll find at a specialized refueling station. It's not going to come for your traditional gas station. You can't pick it up at Walmart. You can't find it at home. You can't make it. Uh, maybe. Oh, uh, no. Don't try that. That's some breaking nope, bad stuff. Nope. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> the refill process, again, isn't much longer than traditional gasoline. Five minutes and you're done. And while this sounds really simple, this is going to lead us to our pros and our cons. All right. So let's talk about the pros. Number one. Yeah, let's start off on a good note because it's, it's, it's all going downhill. Uh, yeah. So the first thing I will say, because a lot of hydrogen haters are going to pop in here and say, oh my goodness, like it's going to explode. It's going to be like the Martian. It's going to be like the Hindenburg. Let's like, let's think. The Hindenburg happened let's in think for a like what, 1937, I think. Has technology changed since 1937? Yes. 
yes, technology has changed a ton since 1937. So <laughs> let's think that, you know, the engineers who are designing these vehicles, they are going to keep in mind um, the, the volatility. 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 Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. You complete me. Uh, <laughs> of hydrogen. And they are going to make these tanks to be durable. And mm -hmm. so uh, a lot of the data that we have pulled from is reporting that there is no hydrogen related incidents when it comes to like if there if there was a Hyundai Nexa or something like that in a crash, yeah. you know, there wasn't a problem because of the hydrogen components. It was, you know, so no so one's crashed their regular. hydrogen cars and had to explode. Correct. Thank you. That was a way better way of summarizing what I was trying to say. That's a win. <laughs> and again, these tanks are designed to be very durable. So if the vehicle is in a collision, it is designed that the tanks are basically not going to have any leaks, any seep or seeping or anything like that uh, should that happen. So mm -hmm. everything that Gabby said is sounding pretty amazing. So let's break down those pros. Then we're going to break down the cons. <laughs> well, I'm ready for the cons. <laughs> so hydrogen vehicles, they are going to be similar to EVs in the sense that they are a smooth, quiet, very peaceful ride. Mm -hmm. They're also going to utilize regenerative braking, which is going to help draw power into that lower capacity, high voltage battery that a lot of these vehicles are going to be equipped with, which is also just going to help level out your, give you a little bit more of that boost for acceleration and, and just because hydrogen stays a little bit steadier at a smooth, steady pace if that makes sense. So smooth, quiet, peaceful ride. One of the huge benefits, of course, is that there are no harmful tailpipe emissions. You're just getting that water coming out. Um, and utilizing the fact that this is classified as a green vehicle is also going to open up to the possibility of federal incentives, but also utilizing the carpool lane. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't want those benefits? I know. I do. Um, you're going to have that fast real refuel time, so it's all the benefit of a, a regular uh, battery electric vehicle with the convenience of a gasoline electric vehicle or so I say. You're also going to get a high range in these vehicles. This is pulled from some U.S. data, so 300 to 400 miles on a tank, depending, of course, on how you're going to be driving it to. And then this one is a pro and a con, but also the fact that these vehicles are typically only available for lease, but with that is going to come some type of incentive for these vehicles. So hydrogen to fill up can be a little bit more expensive than a gasoline, not a little bit more Total, totally is <laughs> more expensive. But with Hyundai, with the Nexo, if you're on a three-year lease in this vehicle, they're also going to give you a spending credit of $15,000 to spend for the period of that three-year lease, which is pretty cool. So that it's great good. that there are incentives like that. There's incentives when it comes to maintenance with the fact that it is being leased. Um, so very, very cool. Cons. Cons. Let's hear them. It's got them. This is all sounding so amazing. You're probably wondering why isn't there more development on these hydrogen vehicles? And there will be, but for right now, it's not quite up to par. It's definitely below par, and I don't know golf terms anymore. The bar is here. From par. It's down here. So, that refueling, it's so easy. It's only easy. five minutes. It's only five minutes. But guess how many refueling, specialized refueling sites there are for these hydrogen vehicles across the U.S. and Canada? Guess. Guess. There's 61. There's 61 of them. Um, we're in Ontario. Our closest one is in Quebec, which is a whole other province over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We also have them in BC, but the bulk of these um, hydrogen refill stations are going to be in the state of California, which is, again, where a lot of this is going to be coming from. It is very California coded, if you will. Yeah. So that's definitely a huge con that the market for these vehicles is not even an entire country. It is a state. <laughs> and even then, it's the highly populated areas. Yes. Another con is the fact that there really is only the option for leasing, not necessarily available as a cash purchase or financing. And then also the cost. So whether it be the acquisition cost, these vehicles can be more expensive, the cost of refueling, but also the specialized service that would go into these vehicles too is, it's gonna be a lot, if you think it's hard to find someone to work on your electric vehicle, think about your hyd hydrogen electric vehicle. It's gonna be a lot harder to find someone specialized in doing that and also, you know, taking it's the hydrogen gonna be the Martian out. all over again. Oh yeah, that's what I'm worried about. Yeah, um, do not work on this car yourself either. No, it's not for you. You got to take it to someone else. <laughs> but I'm sure in California, they are going to have authorized retailers too. Yeah. Um, so let's break down a little bit of the cost of refueling with hydrogen versus of gasoline. So hydrogen for a kilogram is going to cost between $10 to $17. So definitely a lot more expensive, especially since uh, the Toyota version of this is going to have about uh, oh, probably like five gallons, mm -hmm. I'd say. Um, and then if you're comparing that with gasoline, it would be the equivalent of paying, you know, $5 to $8.50 of gasoline. So that's kind of your equivalent. That's a little bit more of your benchmark as to what it's going to be, which is very interesting. Also, of course, the availability is only three manufacturers, Honda, Toyota, and Hyundai have hydrogen vehicles and yeah. they have one of each. 
Insight, Mirai, and the Nexo. Yeah. Y'all got interesting names. <laughs> Y'all got interesting that. names for sure. Mm -hmm. So this definitely isn't going to be something that you're seeing a lot of, but I think that it is something that we're going to see more of in the future too. It's just, we got to develop, we got to pay more attention to how the infrastructure is going to develop because mm -hmm. if you think it's rough and you don't like it when it, in comparison with a battery electric vehicle, it's going to be even more so with hydrogen vehicles. Yeah. If you're already a skeptic for EVs, you're going to hate hydrogen. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till you hear about this. <laughs> yeah. So, but the thing is, these vehicles, they make so much sense. They do make they sense do. and I do want to love them and I'm sure I will, but this is just way too new to the point of not making sense at all. Mm -hmm. Obviously there was early adopters for EVs and it was a little bit more challenging for them too, but how quickly infrastructure has picked up and how it's continuing to do so. We still have so Definitely. many cut EV people come in saying, well, oh, the infrastructure's not ready. It could not be very ready depending on your lifestyle, but for others, it works perfectly. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it really definitely. comes down to your needs. Um, this vehicle, I do find, will suit a lot of people's lifestyles because you don't have that long charge time, refuel mm -hmm. time that you will have with an EV, but you also have nowhere to charge it. Or I was going to say, how many times can you drive around California on that? you know, when it's at full power capacity. That's <laughs> well, what I want to know. That's the thing. Like, when there actually is refueling stations, it'll make so much sense. But for mm -hmm. right now, it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. It makes no sense. The way I kind of put it when I think about this relative to me is I did some research on these, uh, like, a couple years ago when I was in school. But um, I can love and I can be really excited about the tech and the advancements and seeing where the auto industry is going. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's something that's going to work for me right now or something for my lifestyle. So, you know, I'm not going to go out and buy a hydrogen vehicle drive to Quebec to fill up, drive back. Good By not. the time I get back, I'm going to need to fill up again. So you just so. drive back again. I'll just drive back. I'm moving to Quebec. <laughs> I live in Quebec We're going to Quebec. Yeah. I will say here in Canada, we only have two provinces that have um, hydrogen fuel cell mm -hmm. charging stations. And it's BC, which makes sense because it's close to California. It's close to California and Quebec. And Quebec has, I think, one. Quebec's a big, so a big province. <laughs> <laughs> they have a lot of uh, they have a lot of zero emission vehicles there. I was yeah. in Montreal this past weekend and definitely noticed that. Um, I will say I am excited about the future of hydrogen vehicles. Hyundai has allegedly greenlit the production of the Envision 74, which if you're unfamiliar with what that is, it's basically a revamped, really cool, high performance version of a pony coupe. <laughs> Which is super cool. What do you think about it? I think it looks wicked. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to see what they actually do with it, though, if it's going to yeah. be a battery electric vehicle or an hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. So, and that's been a big part of what the speculation has been about this alleged green lighting is, it sounds like gaslighting, yeah. but green lighting? Maybe they are gaslighting us. <laughs> maybe, gaslighting maybe it's not us. coming at all. Um, if they're going to play it with a battery electric vehicle or if they're going to do it with a hybrid hy hydrogen powertrain, mm -hmm. which is something I think that is really neat. Now, personally, I this vehicle excites me when I look at it, and I really hope that they actually choose to go with the battery electric version because that would give us the greater chance that it would come to Canada yes. instead of its market being only segmented to the state of California. Can you imagine? Well, if you guys are just listening to our podcast, you've never seen our YouTube channel. Our channel's called the Kia Hyundai channel. You'll never believe what we film. It's it's Toyota. <laughs> it's the Mirai. So if it does get greenlit and it's a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle, they mm -hmm. send it to Quebec because I'm assuming they won't send it to Ontario since we have no, no chargers. We won't be able to film it. Yeah. So we ha we'll have that, to make that's a special what makes trip. Upset. Yeah. <laughs> we just want to see it. We want to enjoy it. Yeah. But if they do go the hydrogen um, route, I actually have a little bit of info on you know what powertrain they've kind of been talking about. Um, so a hydrogen fuel cell up front with rear storage tanks, and then that's going to be coupled with a 62.4 kilowatt T-shaped battery, and basically that is going to be what's, uh, it seems like that's going to be what's powering the two rear electric motors. So that's kind of how it's going to be propelled. Um, that's going to be 800 volt charging, which is really great to see that continuing. That's pretty standard for Kia and Hyundai at this point. Mm -hmm. And it's give you, going to allow you to go from 10 to 80% in about 18 minutes when it comes to the actual charge of it. Um, which is absolutely great. And also it's going to pull 95 kilowatts to recharge the battery from the fuel cell if, it, it's, if it's having excess, which again, it's, you know, that's just another way of charging in addition to regenerative braking too. Um, you can't be disappointed when it comes to the torque and horsepower, 580 horse, 664 pound feet of torque, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It pretty sounds sweet. like a wicked car. I really hope it does happen. I know, me too. I hope it happens for us. <sighs> we all do. But you know what is happening for us? <laughs> so I just wanted to end off this podcast episode by saying that Hyundai was the first manufacturer to publicly make available a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle for the Canadian market. 
How often have you seen that? Thank you, Hyundai. <laughs> have you ever seen it in Canada? No. Yeah, me no, either. no. Um, we did see an EXO at the LA Auto Show. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was on, so I can't confirm no. if it was real. But it was there. It was there. Just there. But it makes sense, LA, California. Mm -hmm. So that that does make sense. Yeah. Um, however, it is an option on Hyundai's website. The MSRP is seventy two thousand five hundred dollars. So Oof. you know it's nice and cheap. Just kidding. <laughs> That's another thing. The acquisition cost is very expensive right now. So yeah. to spend that much money on a vehicle where you have only two provinces to choose from to refuel it. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, that's rough. You got you got a lot of money and good, a lot and a good lot of for patience. You. And, good for, <laughs> and to be honest, I'm jealous. I am jealous. <laughs> Oh, well, right. I think on that note, we're going to end off today's episode. Thank you guys so much. Let us know what you think about hydrogen vehicles. If you think that it's, you know, where we're heading, if you think that that's some cool tech, or if you're just like, you know what, I'm not ready for it. And I kind of hate the concept of it. It's all valid right now because we don't even know where we stand. So I know where I stand. Certified hater. <laughs> all right. Thank you guys for listening or watching. Let us know again what you think and be sure to check out our YouTube channel, the Kia Hyundai channel and the rest of our podcast episodes. Yes, please do. Bye. Bye.